Hello, welcome back to Trilicus. I'm Wayne. If this is your first visit here, thank you very much for joining me. If you're a returning viewer, thank you very much for your continued support. I would ask anybody that hasn't subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Today I'm just going to give you a brief rundown and opinion on Godzilla King of Monsters. So this film is a direct sequel to Godzilla from 2014 and it is following along in real time. So for the last five years Godzilla hasn't been seen and an organisation called Monarch have discovered that there's more than just one Titan, that there are in fact about 17 or 18 of them. But in the meantime they've been collecting a database on all known Titans. So far, as far as we're aware as viewers, we've only seen Godzilla and King Kong. Although King Kong is also set in the same universe, and Warner Brothers want to create a monsterverse along the lines of the MCU, you don't have to have seen Godzilla or King Kong to enjoy this film. In fact, if you've seen King Kong by Peter Jackson, that's something totally different. The one that you want to watch stars Samuel Jackson, Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston, and came out a couple of years ago. So in order to stitch this universe together, we have an organisation called Monarch very much in the uh, same way that the MCU has S.H.I.E.L.D. Again, following in the same regard as S.H.I.E.L.D., Monarch are a separate entity from the US military and are just a government organisation that have been collecting data and compiling as much facts that they know about the Titans. It's unsurprising that the US military want Monarch to come under their wing and hand over all that information. The military wish to totally destroy and annihilate the Titans whereas Monarch are under the impression that the Titans are here for a reason and they serve a purpose in the balance and order of the world. As this is a sequel, we do see a couple of familiar faces. Ken Waterball and Sally Hawkins reprise their role of Monarch scientists. The main human focal point in this film is the family of Dr. Mark and Emma Russell and their daughter Madison. The two doctors have worked together and suffered a family tragedy and that started the uh, fracture of their relationship. Their relationship further broke down once they discovered a way of controlling the Titans. They both disagreed with what they should do with this equipment and so ended up splitting up. The film starts off with Madison living with her mum and sending an email off to her dad. So there is that conflict within herself because she wants to be loyal to her mum but it gives the impression that she still wants to have contact with her dad which is something totally understandable. However, we're then introduced to one of the Titans, Mothra, which is a larva at this point in time, and they're trying to control her using the equipment that the two scientists developed. Just as this equipment seems to be working on Mothra, the organisation Monica attacked by a group of eco-terrorists led by Charles Dance. Charles Dance's character, Colonel Alan Jonah, is a former British SAS soldier and has now turned his efforts into being an eco-terrorist. With this in mind, the uh, US military are also in the process of trying to take over Monarch and bring them under their wing, so that they would then gain the information that they feel required to wipe out the Titans and protect humanity from the likes of Godzilla. While the uh, representatives of Monarch are trying to justify their position with the US military, one of their facilities is attacked by Colonel Jonah. Colonel Jonah proceeds to eliminate all the scientists except for Emma Russell and her daughter Madison. He, he kidnaps these two and steals the equipment used to control the Titan Mothra. Monarch then cut their uh, meeting short with the US military as they rush to the aid of their comrades. It soon becomes apparent that Colonel Jonah wishes to unleash the power of all known Titans and it then becomes a game of cat and mouse with Monarch trying to shut him down before he is able to do this. But being a couple of steps behind Colonel Jonah, Colonel Jonah is then able to unleash King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah is one of the most powerful of Titans and a true threat to Godzilla. Now free, King Ghidorah has the ability to also awaken the other Titans. This exasperates the situation for humanity as they are become awake, they just destroy their local environment and human populations that are around them. There is only one Titan that can challenge Ghidorah for supremacy, and that is of course Godzilla. So the film's now set up for who's going to have total supremacy over the Earth. Humans, Titans, 
Godzilla, Ghidorah, who knows? I won't give away too much because uh, this is a spoiler free review. But what I would say is, as a summary, if the actors in the film are believable and their characters appear to be genuine and the CGI in the film is also very good. It does have a particular look and style about it and I think that goes back to the original Godzilla films from the 50s and 60s. This may please you, it may not please you. Some critics are saying that it looks terrible but I don't think they've got a true understanding of the history and the heritage of Godzilla and what that actually entails. Godzilla goes on for approximately two hours and I've got to say there wasn't really a time in that two hours that I felt particularly bored. The pacing of the film seems to be just right and you wouldn't think that it's a two hour long film. So yeah, just to bring this to a uh, conclusion, if you enjoyed the previous entries, Godzilla and uh, Kong, you're going to enjoy Godzilla King of Monsters. The critics have got this one wrong as they seem to be giving this quite a poor rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However, the fans, and these are the ones that we need to be listening to, are giving it quite a good review and a thumbs up on Rotten Tomatoes. So go and see it, you won't be disappointed, and then come back here and tell me what you think. If you didn't like it, leave a comment and whatnot below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.